In this video, I want to give you an introduction and talk about solving equations by factoring when the solutions are going to be complex in nature. So what we're going to employ here is the sum of squares factorization, which says a squared plus b squared can be factored down into a plus bi and a minus bi. So again, we have our complex numbers here. So our imaginary i, our imaginary i. So what's going to happen is we're going to factor these expressions equal to zero, and then we're going to set each factor then equal to zero using the zero property of multiplication, and we'll get to that. So x squared plus 100 equals zero. So remember to solve equations uh, by using factoring. We have to have the expression equal to zero. So it is equal to zero, so we're ready to factor this left side now. So x squared plus 100 looks exactly like we can use this a squared plus b squared factorization. So the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 100 is 10, but because it's the sum of two squares, we'll have to add an i, so it'll be plus 10i and minus 10i. All right, so we have two factors here, x plus 10i and another one x minus 10i. And when I'm multiplying these together, I get zero. So that means at least one of these has to be zero. So what we do when we solve these is we have to account for the case that either one could really be zero. So we're gonna set the first one equal to zero and set the second one equal to zero and we're going to solve both of these equations uh, independently. So on this first one, let's subtract 10i from both sides. So it looks like x equals negative 10i, okay? So on the second one, it looks like we can add 10i to both sides, and we'll get x equals positive 10i. So I can write both of those values together as x equals plus or minus 10i, and that will be the solution for this initial x squared plus 100 equals zero equation. So let's go ahead and plug them back in and kind of see how it works. So I'll make a little room here. So we'll say x squared plus 100 equals zero, and we're testing to see if positive and negative 10i work. So let's go ahead and use positive 10i first. So 10i squared plus 100 equals zero. So we'll square the 10 and square the i. So it's gonna be 100i squared plus 100 equals zero. Well, i squared is a negative one, so we'll put a negative out front. And negative 100 plus 100, yeah, zero equals zero. So that one worked. Okay, how about the negative 10i? So let's go negative 10i squared plus 100 equals zero. So when I square the negative 10 and square the i, well, negative 10 squared is positive 100, and then i squared, and then see, we end up with the same thing. So i squared is negative one, so we'll put the negative out front, negative 100 plus 100, zero equals zero, so it works out. So what we did here, we started with x squared plus 100 equals zero, we use the sum of squares factorization to factor this down. And then we use the zero property of multiplication to set each factor equal to zero. And then we solved and put our answers together. So in this case, x equaled plus or minus 10i. In this second equation, we're going to solve 175x squared plus 7 equals zero. And we're going to do so by factoring again. But I notice that between these two terms, I actually have a greatest common factor that can come out before I have to use the sum of squares. So it looks like I can pull a 7 out. So when I do so, I'll have 25x squared plus 1 equals 0. Well, my 25x squared plus 1 will work nicely with my sum of squares because 25x squared is a perfect square and 1 is a perfect square. So I'll keep my 7, which is my greatest common factor, and I'll put 5x and 1, 5x and 1, and that equals 0. 
But of course, the formula says we have to have an I with this one, and one is positive, and one is negative. So I'm going to sneak an I in with each one of those. So my factorization is now uh, complete. So I have 5x plus I. Let's go ahead and get rid of that one, because we don't need that there, really. And 5x minus I. So here we have complete factored form, so I can use the zero property of multiplication because if I'm taking 7 and multiplying it by 5x plus i and then multiplying that by 5x minus i in order to get zero, it means one of these factors, you know, had to be zero. Well, of course, 7 can't be zero because 7 is 7 and there's no variable here. So we can deal with them a couple of ways. We can go ahead and say 7 equals 0, but because this is a false, meaningless statement, I can ignore it. So we'll go ahead and do that just to show all the work. So the second one is 5x plus i equals 0, and the third one is 5x minus i equals 0. So let's go ahead and solve each one of those independently. So when I subtract i from both sides, 5x equals negative i, and a quick division by 5 on both sides will give me x equals negative one-fifth i. Okay, so on the second one, adding i to both sides will give me 5x equals positive i, and once again, a quick division by 5 from both sides will give me a positive one-fifth i. So I can rewrite my solution as plus or minus one-fifth i. Okay, so I would challenge you to go ahead and plug this back in and make sure that it works like we did on the first example. So I'm saying x equals plus or minus one-fifth i is the solution for this equation 175x squared plus 7 equals 0. And we found that in this case by factoring it using the sum of squares factorization over complex numbers and then using the zero property of multiplication and setting all of our factors equal to zero and solving. In this third and final example we're going to solve the equation x to the fifth minus x equals zero. And in this case, we're actually going to use difference of squares and sum of squares. And we have the minus here, and then this sum of squares will kind of be hidden inside here. I'll show you what that's going to look like. So before we get going, we have our expression on our left equal to zero. So that's where it has to be in order to use factoring to solve this equation. And then it looks like I have a greatest common factor of x that I can pull out of both of these terms. So x to the fourth minus 1 equals 0. And here's my difference of squares. x to the fourth minus 1 can be factored because we have the difference of two perfect squares. So the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. And then the square root of 1 is just 1. So we'll have x squared minus 1 and x squared plus 1. All right, well, x squared minus 1 looks like another difference of squares. And here, kind of hidden inside, was x squared plus 1, which is actually going to be my sum of squares. So I'm going to have a lot of factors here. So my greatest common factor was x that I pulled out at the beginning. So this x squared minus 1 can factor down to x plus 1 and x minus 1. And then my x squared plus 1 will have to use the sum of squares, which employs the i here. So this will end up being x plus i and x minus i. Okay, one, two, three, four, five factors here. So could be upwards of five solutions for this. Well, our zero property of multiplication says that if I multiply all five of these things together and I get zero, then you know at least one of these things has to be zero. So I'm going to account for all of them. So x equals zero, x plus one equals zero, x minus one equals zero, x plus i equals zero, x minus i equals zero. And I'm going to solve all these. Well, this one's solved already. x is, well, zero. When I subtract one from both sides, x is negative one. When I add one to both sides, x is positive one. When I subtract i from both sides, x is negative i. And when I add i to both sides, x is positive i. 
So I have one, two, three, four, five answers. So let's go ahead and say x equals zero plus or minus one plus or minus i. So here are all five solutions. Some are real and some are imaginary, but those are all the solutions for x to the fifth minus x equals zero. And again, I would encourage you to go ahead and plug them in just to verify that they work.